I wrote a piece of software called QuickBlocks, and QuickBlocks is the company that I'm trying to start. And I fell in love day one with shared data that every person on the planet has on their hard drive. I want the data on your hard drive. And everything I see is get the data from this third party over here because the data is this huge thing that nobody wants to download onto their own hard drive. So I love the idea of everybody having their own data and I want to build a world where every application literally interacts only with a local node. And then everybody has perfectly safe data because it's consented to by the whole, the whole world and everybody's operating with all the data in the world totally on their own hard drive. That's decentralization to me. Okay, so that's what I'm working towards. That's what I want to see. So I fell in love with this data and I said, I'm going to go get this data. And as soon as I started trying to get the data, I couldn't get to it because I had to download a node. I had to sync the node. I had to, once I started getting the data, the data was ugly and difficult to understand. So um, I've been working on that for about a year and a half. So I'll just show you briefly. Um, I'm a programmer, so everything I do is on the command line. So uh, I'm going to show you briefly kind of where QuickBlocks lives, what QuickBlocks does. So um, that's the blockchain. I think of this as a halo of protection because it's consented to data. And there's remote nodes that are remote from my house and then there's nodes that I'm running in my house, okay? So I'm actually running a node on this computer. So I'm writing software that, this is all Ethereum, I'm all Ethereum, just because I'm one guy, I don't have time to do all these other things. And I think that it seems to me that the largest community is gonna be the one of most interest to most people. And I think it's gonna be a 90%, 10% for all the rest kind of thing. That's just my theory. So I've written libraries, tools, and applications. Uh, the libraries, I'm gonna sit down. The libraries communicate with either my local node, that's the preference, but if the local node isn't there, it'll communicate to, to a remote node. And it creates a binary cache of all the data. And then I can run tools against this. Uh, I allow these tools to choose the fastest method. If the data is here, it'll come back to here. If the data is here, it'll find it here and then put it here so the next time it comes back, it's that much faster. And if it's here, it'll bring it back and put it here. So the goal is that I have all the data removed from the blockchain so that it's more easily consumed by my tools and my applications because the data that comes back from here is really ugly, I think. And then I, uh, I'm developing other applications. So all of this is open source. I'm gonna give all this to open source, but I'm gonna anticipate that people can get fast data and I'm developing applications over here. So data analytics. I'm gonna show you an example of a data monitor. Um, and the, block, the blockchain scraper is just like etherscan.io, but it's running on my hard drive. So. And then there's opportunities to build further applications out here. Uh, if you have all the data, you can build much better web 3.0 websites than I think people are building now. You can feed this data into accounting or auditing. Um, this is going to be open source and then I'm working on these applications. So I'll give you an example of this. So I said that I can go against Infura, which is a remote node out in the ether somewhere. And that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to ask for 10 blocks from Infura. So this went out to the world and it, it got um, about 100 blocks a second, which is actually pretty quick. Um, this next one runs against a local node. That This is a local node here. So this is running against a local node, uh, Parity. 
I got a thousand blocks or a hundred times more blocks and it didn't take that many more seconds than this one did and I got about a hundred blocks per second. This one didn't seem to work so yeah. just ignore that. Next I'm going to run against uh, quick blocks. Same exact data. I visited a thousand blocks. I visited 3100 transactions for that much we and that much gas. So that's the same thousand blocks but it was significantly faster than going against the local node. And what you get when you have significantly faster data is the opportunity to do a lot of interesting things. So um, actually I can get even faster. So instead of a thousand blocks I'm getting 10,000 blocks here. That's from quick blocks and now I'm going to go I, I allow people to choose how much data they want to get. If they want to get the full detail of the entire blockchain, that's one thing. Or they can say, I'm only interested in certain parts of the blockchain, and then it's a lot faster. So here, I got the same number of transactions, and we, but it was nearly four times faster. So I allow people to choose how fast they want the data, and, but they have to give up a lot of the data. They don't get to see everything. And this is uh, as fast as I get so far, even though it's slower than the last one. And this is 100, uh, sorry, that was as fast as I get. And this is 100,000 blocks. You can see I'm retrieving the same number of transactions, but I ignore a lot of the data is what I do and I can get faster and faster and then I can do all kinds of analytics a lot quicker than I could otherwise. So, um, may I continue? Yeah, yes. All right. Yeah, as a t I, didn't, I, I didn't turn on the timer. Of course you did. So I was saying that um, I want to build monitors, which uh, if you know anything about Ethereum, you know about the, the DAO hack from last summer. $50 million was taken out of this smart contract over a period of about eight hours, or maybe, a, I don't even know how long, probably longer than that. And um, no one knew it until the fifth hour that the money was coming out of the smart contract. And I'm going to show you that because I have really fast access to data, I can watch smart contracts as they behave and I can see blatantly obviously where this hack happened and if I had been watching the DAO contract I could have stopped the DAO, I mean the DAO would have had to have a little ticker on it to turn it off yeah, sure. but if it had a little ticker on it I could have turned it off on transaction one instead of transaction 9,000 after 50 million dollars. So. Uh, I think that's profound. I think that's magnificent that I could help people write smart contracts that I can watch. They can build their smart contracts so that it purposefully gives data to a monitor outside of the uh, chain. And you can give people more of a sense of assurance that they're not going to get hacked as much. So um, I'll show you an example of that. So uh, these monitor things, they let me show all the data. Um, so that is the DAO data. And basically what's happened is there's the time, that's the block, that's the person that sent the transaction, that's the DAO, and then I can translate the data back into what it was. So this was an approval for somebody to spend money on the DAO. So um, I've written a lot of different uh, tools, one of the tools I have is called when block. So if I want to know what was the block that happened on January 1st, uh, that tells me that's the first block prior to January 1st. So I use this tool all the time because I want to look at the DAO hack. So the DAO hack happened at this block number. So I'm going to show you the DAO hack from about two and a half, three hours prior to the hack, and you'll, you'll see the hack. It's the most obvious thing you'll ever see. Is this tool on GitHub or some open source place? It's on GitHub and it's open source and I'm announcing it today, so. Awesome. 
Now, the parts that actually make money are not open source. <laughs> Although none of it has made any money quite yet, but you know, you get the idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show the transactions on the DAO. Um, and I'm going to just back off about 4,000 blocks, which is about four hours, and just run it through here. So I'm just going to start it over. So this is just how the DAO looked. This is about three hours prior, and right there's the hack. So, so I'm going to take a couple more off of here. So that's what it looked like before the hack. And that's the hack. <laughs> wow. And this goes on for six and a half hours without anyone noticing that it happened. And I'm, I can show uh, any level of data off of the chain. So I'm going to show the traces. So this is, um, this is just a little bit more information. So it's still about, there's the hack, okay? So what you can see, I'll make this a little bigger is the guy would send, the guy's sending a single transaction right there, and it, you can see it's taken out 258. Okay, so if I'm writing a piece of uh, monitor code, I'm gonna say, see what happens with these token contracts is you give ether and you get tokens in return. And at the end of the token sale, there's a relationship between ether and tokens, right? And there's certain functions in the smart contract that might spend money or it might receive money, but those are known things. So you can keep an accounting at every block that says the relationship between tokens and Ether just went wow, like that, right? And that's a marker that says something really weird just happened. So I'm going to sell monitoring for these smart contracts and say, why are you investing in a smart contract that's not monitored? Are you an idiot? And everybody's going to say, of course it should be monitored. And then you're going to get a little tag on the bottom of your smart contract. says monitored. I'm so confident that I can find these things. I'm so confident I can find a recursive attack that I would insure your smart contract against loss. So I see this whole industry of insurance for smart contracts, right? Yeah. Nice. Because you can, you can watch this stuff. I can put a list together of me and my best friend watching smart contracts and we're going to see the hack before everybody else and then we're going to do whatever we do to make the most money off of that or something like that. But, <laughs> so, um, now let me say, huh? Three minutes over. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm done. <laughs> Um, th I swear to God, this is the truth. This is one thing that I found when you start looking at fast data off of this blockchain. There's 50 things as interesting as this when you get fast data. Jay, what are you announcing today specifically? What? Oh, I announced uh, Quick Blocks is available on, the, on my GitHub. It's a, and uh, quickblocks.io is the website.